If you would, turn with me in your Bible to um, Luke chapter 8. Uh, Luke chapter 8, very familiar portion of Scripture for those of you who are um, daily in the Word. We're going to read from verses 1 to 9, and this is what it says. It says, After this, Jesus, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary, from whom seven demons had come out, Joanna, the wife of Chusa, the, the manager of Herod's household, Susanna, and many others, these women were helping to support them out of their own means. While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed and he was scattering the seed. Some fell along the path it was trampled on and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground and when it came up the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than was sown. When he said this, he called out, Whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. His disciples asked what this power meant. He said, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God have been given to you, but to others I speak in parables, so that those seeing they may not see, though hearing they may not understand. And verse 17, For there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed, and nothing concealed, that will not be known or brought out into the open. One of the things that we need to observe is that Jesus emphasized not only what must we hear God's word. So not only must we hear God's word, but that we must also act on it too. If he had the power to feed over 5,000 people, certainly he has good reason to speak these words into our lives. He said that, verse 4 of of Luke chapter 8, it says, a large crowd was gathering and Jesus was coming from, from town to town. A large crowd was gathering. One of the things that I also noticed as I've been studying the word a little bit more in depth is that Jesus was only surrounded by 12 people. He only had 12 helpers. The rest of the people who came to him, they were crowds. They were just crowds of people coming and looking for something. And so with the 12 that Jesus had, the scripture tells us in in verse 12, it says, the 12 came. With the 12 that he had, he was able to feed 5,000 people. He was able to feed large crowds to take care of large crowds that followed him from place to place with just the 12. This morning I want us to think about the power that God has placed in our hands today and to ask ourselves whether we are Relying on thousands or whether we are relying on just the 12? Are we relying on thousands to come through for us? You see, thousands follow Jesus, but he only had the 12 to help him. I don't know what the 12 is in your life today. I don't know what it is, but I want to let you know one thing. That when you are built on that solid foundation, when you are built on Christ Jesus, it doesn't matter whether there are 12 around you or whether there are 10,000 around you. God is going to come through for you anyway. It's all about your faith. It's all about what you are going to believe in. It's not about the numbers. I say this all the time. I've said this to you multiple times. On Sunday morning when we gather in the state of Massachusetts in the middle of pandemic, there's between 8 and 10 of us. That's it. 
state law between 8 and 10, 25% capacity between 8 and 10 for the longest time in the state of emergency. Now, one could look at it and say, you know what? There's not enough people around, so therefore I'm just going to close shop. Isn't that what we do oftentimes with our lives? Are we looking for thousands or is the 12 that God has placed in your life, is, is it sufficient? Is the one that God has placed in your life, is it sufficient? Saints of God, I want you to know this morning that with Christ, nothing is impossible. So therefore, he can take the one, he can take the 12, he can multiply it into 5,000, 10,000, 20,000. That is the God that we serve. The wondrous, amazing God that we serve is not moved by numbers. He is not moved by what amount you may have in your wallet. He is not moved by how many are seated in the pews. He's going to perform miracles anyway. He's going to come through for you anyway. He's not moved by how many helpers you may have around you. Did you know that many times it is more efficient to work with one than to work with a thousand? So one of the things that we have to learn to is to appreciate that which God has placed in our hands. If he gives you one person to solve that problem with you, thank you, Father, for the one. If it's 12 that he gives you, Thank you, Father, for the twelve. So we look at the situation with Jesus. There he is with just twelve disciples. And he has a few problems. Number one, they're in a remote place. So there he is. He says he's traveling from place to place. It's not like he's, you know, at home where there's all probably all kinds of supplies available to him. He has very little. And when you have time, I want you to go also and read from uh, the, the, the parable of the 5,000. Many of you already know that. Problem number two. It was already very late. If you look at Mark chapter 6 and verse 35, that's where that story is described one more time. You will find that it was late. The crowd were gathered in a remote location. There was no money available. Seriously. There was a large crowd gathering, and I thank God for that revelation this morning, because it's not about how much you have in your wallet. It's all about what Jesus is going gonna, is gonna to do to your wallet. And a lot of times we don't understand that well enough. It's not about whether you have a dollar or two dollars or two thousand or five thousand in the wallet. It's what God is about to do to that wallet. It's what he's about to do to that bank account. That's what we should be focused on. Jesus had no budget. He had no money to feed five thousand people, to feed the large crowds that were following him. Problem number three. In a remote place, in today's age, we would say he had no cell phone, right? He was, it was already late, no budget whatsoever. Big problem, right? right? And yet, he was not moved by the problems that he faced. Rather, he was moved by the solutions. You see, we spend a lot of time focused on our problems, don't we? And we spend very little time focused on solutions. Think about it for a moment. When a problem comes our way, oh Lord, you know, this da 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 and we get so mired in our problems you see some people falling into depression. 
You see some people getting addicted to painkillers, addicted to even worse, cocaine, meth, heroin. You see people get destroyed, distraught. Why? Because they're focused so much on the problem itself and not on the solution. Jesus didn't focus on the problems. If you if you read story after story after story, every time he was around and there was a problem, there was also a solution. Hallelujah. I want to let you know today that there is a solution for that problem that you are facing in your life. Jesus has already created that solution for you. Now you need to focus on it. Focus on that solution this morning. Thank you, Jesus. We're not going to focus on the problem. We're going to focus on the solution. And so Jesus didn't have any money to feed 5,000 people. He didn't have a good location where he could say, let me just grab some food. It was also very late. And so it looked like to the naked eye, to the human eye, that there was no solution whatsoever. But you see, that's why it's important what we read, and I want to encourage you to go back and look at that word again. You need to look where you are sowing. If if, if that seed is sowed on just plain rocky ground, there's going to be no outcome. If that seed that you sow is planted among thorns, then it will be eaten up. We need to make sure that our seed is planted in good ground. What do I mean by our seed? This time I'm talking about the root from which we obtain everything that we need. Because you see, when the problems come our way, we need to go back to the source. And so, what is your source today? We sang earlier, at the center of it all, it's you that I see. Is Jesus Christ your source? Is he your solid foundation? Is he your rock? Is he your go-to solution? Remember, we're not going to focus on problems anymore. It's time to start looking at solutions. If you look around you, you see a lot of people who are who are constantly negative. They're always focused on problems. Scripture tells us that we ought to be thinking about the things that are pure, the things that are lovely, the things that are of good report. Do you think problems are pure, lovely, and of good report? But solutions are. And so we know that when Christ is in our lives, and I'm going to wrap up in just a moment. Thank you so much for being patient with me. We know that when Christ is in our lives, there is always a solution at hand. Always. You show me one part of the Bible where Jesus was in the midst of a situation and there wasn't a solution. I want to let you know today that this is the same Jesus that we serve right at this very moment. Whatever it is that you are facing in your life, he has already created a solution for you. To go back, we didn't have enough time to read uh, of the the, the feeding of the 5,000, but this verse right here, Verses of scripture in Luke chapter 8 was setting the foundation for it. So I want you to go back if you don't know the story of the 5,000. You can go back and read that. In these verses right here it says a large crowd was gathering. And people, they were coming. Jesus only had the 12. It says the 12 came to him. In chapter 9 and verse 12. And so today, I want to ask you to not focus on 
what your eyes can see, but rather on what you have not yet seen. The scripture says, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard that which God has in store for you, his child. And so we're going to recognize as yes that there are problems, but guess what? Jesus has already provided the solution for us. And so we're going to focus not on that which we see, but rather on that which is unseen. The solution is at hand for you today. I want to pray for you this morning. I want to pray for you. Maybe you've been looking at your situation and not seeing the solution, but mired in the problem. I want to pray that God will open up your eyes so that you can see very clearly that he already has provided a solution for you. Hallelujah. And so because he, that solution is available, because we know he's a problem solver, there's no problem that we have seen that he didn't, even, he didn't solve. He even solved the biggest problem of all, which was that we were destined to a life of eternal damnation. The solution to that problem was his own life. He was willing to do even that. For every problem that he faced, he had a solution. And so therefore, he has a solution for you. If only you could remain faithful, trust in him. Don't depend on your own understanding this morning. But allow him to bring that solution forward on your behalf. I want to pray for you. Dial star five to raise your hand. You truly believe that Jesus is your problem solver this morning. That there is nothing that you are facing in your life that he will not solve for you. Now it's time to give him that problem. Give it over to him. Turn it over to him this morning. He's a problem solver. He proved it to us already. And so we're going to turn over every problem to him this morning. There's somebody on the line, you're facing a situation, it's concerning your imminent, your imminent future. So, you don't know what to do in the next month, in the next two months, in the next three months. When the 5,000 came to Jesus, he didn't have a plan. It wasn't something that he had planned for. But yet he was able to solve that problem immediately. He was able to feed all 5,000 of them with some leftover. Jesus wants to solve your situation today. Star five to raise your hand. I want to pray for you this morning. You've been facing a problem in your life. It's been that way for a long time. I want to let you know today that when you turn it over to God, he will take care of it for you. Just turn it over. He's the one who is the problem solver, not us. Let him solve it for you today. I also want to pray for a third set of people. You've just, you just need to have more faith in God. Find yourself complaining. Find yourself in a place where you just don't, don't think it's enough. You just don't think your life is enough. God wants to elevate you. He wants to elevate you this morning. Hallelujah. We're not going to focus on problems today. We're going to rather focus on solutions this morning. In the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I pray for every hand that is lifted up this morning, Father. I pray even right now, O oh God, that in your mercy and in your grace, O oh God, that, Lord, that you will pour out your spirit upon your children this morning, Father. For those, Lord God, who have been thinking that their problems could not be solved, Lord, we now know that you are a problem solver. Hallelujah. For those, Lord God, who have been facing uncertainty for the next month, the next two months, the next three, Father, we thank you 
Because, Lord God, you showed us already. You already proved to us that in uncertain times, oh God, that you, are, you always have a way for us. And so, Father, I pray that you would lead the way this morning. Lead the way for your son. Lead the way for your daughter. In the mighty name of Jesus, I lift up every hand to you, Lord God, even right now. Lord God, from Texas and from New York and from Tennessee, Lord God. From North Carolina and Illinois, from Washington, Massachusetts, and Georgia, Heavenly Father. We lift up these hands to you right now, O God, from Wisconsin, Lord God. We pray, O oh God, that by your power, by your grace, Lord God, that you will solve every problem in this house today. Solve every problem, Lord. Just as you solved the problems that you faced, you are the same God who is here to solve these problems on our behalf. Lord, we will not look at that which we see with the naked eye. But rather, we will look at the unseen, that which you are performing in our midst. And we will give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And let the children of God say, Amen. Go ahead, say it one more time. Amen, Amen, and Amen. Hallelujah. Here's what we are going to declare in our lives this morning. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. We thank God for that verse today. Here is what it says in First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. We're going to declare and decree that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for me, because I love him. The things that he has prepared for my sons, Tim and Andrew. The things that he has prepared for this ministry, Fulfill Life Ministries. The things that he has prepared for my family, an extended family, for every brother, every sister on the line this morning. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man. The things that God has in store for you today. I speak that over your life. First Corinthians 2 and 9. In other words, you are claiming right now that every problem in your life is solved. Hallelujah. And then, there's so much more that God is going to pour out upon you today in the name of Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 2. And verse 9, turn in your Bible with me if you have your Bible handy so that you can repeat it. That's what we're going to be declaring and decreeing this morning in our lives. And if you need help uh, uh, repeating it today, I am more than happy to help you. Just dial stuff. I have to raise your hand anyway. First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9, Pastor Avenel, I declare, I decree, I speak it over my life. I speak it over my family, over my household. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has in store for me today. In the name of Jesus. You're going to apply your faith. You're going to stand on that word that you heard today. And you're going to declare that it is done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. My sister Dolores, go ahead, Dolores. Good morning, uh, Pastor Greetings, and I'd like to thank you for the special birthday wishes yesterday. Um, truly made my day. Uh, I declare to greet today that eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard, that have entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. And that includes me, my daughter, Natasha, my grandkids, Jane and Carter, and my siblings, especially Robert, and for this ministry. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. My sister Dolores, I do speak into your life. I stand in agreement with you this morning, in the mighty name of Jesus, that in this next year of your life, hallelujah, as you have now entered into this new chapter of your life, that eyes have not seen, 
Hallelujah. Huh. Ears have not heard, my sister. It has <laughs> never entered into your heart or anyone else's heart. The things that God has in store for you. Because you love him. <laughs> Hallelujah. I declare it, I decree it, I speak it over your life. I pray that it will carry you through in this new year. In the mighty name of Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We give God praise. Go ahead, Alicia. Go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Oh, good morning, Pastor Avenel. Good morning, everyone. I'm I declare and decree, and I'm standing on First Corinthians two and nine. Eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for me and for my. And I speak this over my daughters, uh, Alyssa and Chastity, my granddaughters Sophia and, and Alice, and for my family and for my son in law Ray, and for this ministry who loves who loves Him. I speak this over us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. My sister Alicia, we stand in agreement with you, for you, for your entire family, in the name of Jesus. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man. The things that God has in store for you, for your children, and for your children's children. In the mighty name of Jesus. We are standing in agreement with you, my dear sister, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Go ahead, my brother, Ola. Go ahead. Good morning, Pastor Avana and everyone. I declare and decree, as in 1 Corinthians 2 now, that I have not seen, nor ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for me because I love him with my family and household in Jesus' name. Amen. My brother Ola, I stand in agreement with you. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. You're so very special to God, so very special son of God that you are. Hallelujah. You are his son. Hallelujah. And so therefore... We can say with certainty that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man. The things that God has in store for you, that which you have not yet seen, I speak into your life right now, that starting on today, that it will be revealed to you in the mighty name of Jesus on a daily basis. You will experience that which God has spoken concerning you and concerning your household. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man. The things that God has in store, he has prepared for those who love him. Go ahead, Althea, go ahead. Good morning. I, Althea, declare and decree that according to 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, that eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for me, my daughter, my grandson, this ministry, and those who diligently seek him. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I speak that over your life. My sister Althea, I stand in agreement for you, for Casey, for Caleb. In the mighty name of Jesus, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard the things that God has in store for you and for your loved ones. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Go ahead, my sister Mary. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, all. I declare and decree. First Corinthians 2, 9. Praise the Lord. Eyes have not seen, nor ear have heard nor have it entered into the hearts of man, the things which God has prepared for me, for Lawson, and for Nicole, and for my sisters and brothers, and the church family, and fulfill life ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, Mary. Hallelujah. Nor has it entered into your heart, into Lawson's heart, into... Uh, Nicole's heart into any one of you 
into your hearts today, into any of our hearts. There's so much that God has prepared for you in the name of Jesus. You will experience it starting today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, my sister Beverly. Good morning, Pastor Evanel. Uh, I'm declaring and decreeing on 1 Corinthians 2 and 9 that I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for myself, my brother Titus, and his wife, children, and grandchildren that love him. Amen. I stand in agreement with you, uh, Beverly, in the name of Jesus for you, for Titus, for his wife and kids. In the name of Jesus, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has purposed, that he has prepared for you today because you love him. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead, Natasha. Good morning, everyone. I declare and decree, ears have not seen, I mean, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard that entered to the heart of man, the things that God has in store for me, my sons, and my parents, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. I stand in agreement for you, for Jaden and Carter, in the name of Jesus, for Miguel and Dolores, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. You are stepping out into greater things. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God has so much in store for you, for because you love him so much, in store for your Sons in store for your family and your extended family as well. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Go ahead, my sister Christina. Christina, go ahead. Yeah, good morning, everyone. I decree and I declare um, Second Corinthians 2, 9, that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, or entered into the heart of man what God has in store for me and my children and my family in the name of Jesus. Amen. I touch and agree with you, my sister Christina, in the mighty name of Jesus, that God has solved every problem on your behalf, and you will start experiencing, hallelujah, the results, the solutions in the name of Jesus, because eyes have not, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man. The things that God has prepared for you today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead, uh, my sister. Anita, go ahead. Aloha, Pastor, Mother, and my brothers and sisters in Christ. I declare and decree, 1 Corinthians 2, 9, Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of man, um, the things God has in store for my family and my church family in the world. Amen. 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 I stand in agreement with you, Anita, in the name of Jesus, that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man, the things that God has in store for you and for your entire family, in Jesus' name. I speak that over the nation today, in the name of Jesus, as we... Get ready for so much that is unraveling at this very moment. That eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man. The things that God has in store for this nation, because we love him. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Purina. Yes, I stand in agreement. I decree and declare declare and decree that my eyes have not seen, my ears have not heard, and has not entered men. I'm trying to learn. Men's... Uh, the heart of man. Heart of man. Thank you. And and to protect my kids. And my, and, 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 God has in for you. and God has in store for me. Yes, Jesus. Okay, Thank you. Kids. Amen. I speak that Amen. over your life, Karina, in the name of Jesus. I speak that over Noah, over Faith, over Cody, over Sadie, over Mason, in the mighty name of Jesus. That eyes have not seen, ears have not heard nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has in store for you and for your children. In the mighty name of Jesus, we claim it, we call it done. 
in Jesus' mighty name. Now step forward and receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. It truly, truly has been such a pleasure to have been with you this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so I want to thank God for you, saints of God, brothers and sisters. I, it's really just such a joy. I know that we were a little bit unorthodox this morning. We didn't do exactly as we do every morning, but we followed the leading of the Holy Spirit, and we thank God for allowing us the opportunity for us to just spend time in some time in worship uh, with Him and to honor His name this morning. We also thank God for the Word. We thank Him for reminding us that He's a problem solver, that there is nothing that is too hard for Him to do, and all we have to do is to just step forward in faith, believing that it has already been done for us in Jesus' name. I want to uh, encourage your heart this morning, even as you have heard the word. I was talking to uh, one of the sisters yesterday, and she said to me, Pastor Avenel, I truly believe that where you are fed, where you are being fed, that's where you should be tithing. That's where you should be giving your offerings. And so uh, I say this to my son all the time. Uh, my my son Andrew, who is not yet, he's not yet married. We're trusting and believing God for him for that too. But uh, he he's one thing I know about him is that when he comes to eat at my house, he will always have come with a trip to the grocery store. He will always come because he has been taught well. That you don't you don't come, be fed, you eat, you drink, you are blessed. Then you just say thank you and you leave, and then you come back the next day for more. So if you are being fed by the word this morning, it has a lot of meaning to you. You're growing by it. I want to encourage you to show your love and your support for the work through your giving, in planting of your seed. We talked about seed falling on good ground today. You know that this is good ground. You believe in the work. Hallelujah. And so I want to encourage you to plant your seed where you're being fed. Give your tithe, your offering. You're being fed here. Uh, you can give online, fullfiltrage.com. You also can call us on 857-342-3440. Our phone number is on the website, but 3440 is all you need to remember. The difference between this number, last four digits, and the prayer line number 3440. You can use Zelle or PayPal or the Cash app as well. Have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed day, everybody. We're going to be back on 8 a.m. this morning, 8 a.m. today. Uh, we, will, we will be uh, worshiping again. You can invite somebody that you know needs to join. Then at um, 12 noon and also at um, 9 p.m. Eastern time, that's all Eastern time. You've got to convert that to Pacific if you're on the West Coast. And uh, you can join in at these various sessions today. Um, have a blessed, blessed day, everybody. We love you. I'm going to unmute the line, allow you to greet.